and welcome back to my ancestral tarot journey. It really is a journey that has been full of twists and turns and quite exciting and I'm finding quite accurate. It's, it's most enjoyable travelling through tarot and disco discovering sort of quirks and issues that I know have occurred or that are being brought to my attention now, explaining traits and everything else about my own personality and why they could be there. Well, we're starting back up on chapter five, the second part of chapter five, because again, it was a long chapter and I broke it down into two parts and I have a spread here ready for us to read together. I haven't looked at the cards, so it's going to be a surprise for all of us. <laughs> But before I start, I want to take this opportunity to put a thank you out there to a very, very lovely lady. Her name is Anne Fort, and many of you in the tarot community will have heard of Anne and be aware of the beautiful tarot bags that she makes. Um, I did a review of a deck not so long ago that I wasn't altogether happy with, and um, Anne in really liked the look of the deck, so I sent it to Anne, and she's fallen in love with it. I'm so glad that it has found a home where it's going to be truly appreciated. And today when I arrived in the house from out being out this morning, I had a lovely, lovely surprise because on my doorstep there was a parcel and in that parcel was this beautiful, beautiful green tarot pouch. And it's really lovely and so suits um, um, my, oh gosh, universal Celtic tarot that's going to go in here. And it's the perfect colors. But not only was the tarot bag in there, along with a beautifully uh, written um, card, but so were Murph and Paddy. Two handmade stuffed toys, teddy bears and a monkey from Anne. They're just so beautiful and fit in perfectly with Teddy Edward and Edwina. Edwina was also created by Anne when I was poorly some while back. And so Edwina here now has her Teddy Murph and her pal Paddy the monkey and Teddy Edward to keep her company. So Anne, thank you so much. These are such an absolute delight. And um, I collect bears, I love bears, I love toys. <laughs> See, I have one majorly huge in a child. <laughs> so they sit here and they look after different decks here on this tarot shelf and I am so glad to have them. Anyway, thank you again Anne. Now moving on to part two of chapter five, we are looking at the fateful five, patterns that need breaking. So what sort of patterns are we looking at? We're looking at traits like uh, passive aggressiveness, limiting beliefs, and I'll go back and explain each one that old gremlin fear, and a skewed world view. Then we have um, tyrants, also known as the never question me people. And we have a family pattern spread. So I've completed the family pattern spread and I will go over that. But And um, I'll also explain why I felt that I did not feel there was the need for me to do a couple of the spreads and I'll get to that. See, healing is massive. It's not just a case of, say, healing after being ill or healing when you've fallen over, or healing if you've cut yourself. It's emotional and psychological and mental healing from um, traits or behaviours that have been carried down through the generations. And this can explain a lot of behaviours or quirks or addictions that you could find within your world. So, looking at passive-aggressive, I'm just going to read a small part of this, the beginning of this chapter. Whilst aggressive traits are right out there in the open for all to see, passive-aggressive ones are subtler. Instead of directly confronting an issue, the passive-aggressive person uses less obvious means to land a blow and get their own way. And that's actions that can be consistent of behaviours such as sulking, deliberately not following through with a request, such as forgetting to pick up clothes at the cleaners or making cruel comments disguised as humour. OK, so all this, it's a, it, this is a learned behaviour. OK, and um, it's 
you need to heal it. You know, if you recognise that sort of pattern, it's something that needs to be healed. You know, um, <laughs> if you, if either you find yourself guilty of being pass a, 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 somebody who's passive aggressive, or somebody else is behave, behaving like that with you, it's important that you recognise this and start healing it now, because it's something that your children will go on to learn, and you know it. It won't help them in years to come, but also it smashes your own um, belief in yourself and your own um, courage and your own um, confidence, you know. Um, as it says here, as this is a learned behaviour, if you don't try to heal the pattern, you can fall victim to it almost without realising it. And as such, the beat goes on. OK, then you've got limited beliefs, limiting beliefs. If you grew up in a family where you always heard about the things you or the family can't do, you're a victim of lim limiting beliefs. For instance, we can't afford that or that is too dangerous or people are bad or no one in the family goes to college. These beliefs may impact you financially, emotionally or in your worldview and in your own progress as you set out on your own life path. So. All that, you know, it's instilling the fears of our ancestors onto each of us. Um, you know, you can't climb that mountain, so you won't. You're being told you can't um, excel at maths, so you won't. You know, everybody has the potential to succeed. And a lot of that, a lot of that potential to succeed is based on the foundation of having a positive outlook and positive self-belief. So if you've got somebody who is limiting beliefs and they're putting that onto you, or you might find that you're putting it onto your children, well, you know, we can't do it, so what makes our kids think they can do it type of attitude, then stop that as well. That's a learned behaviour, and that needs to change to a more positive outlook. Um, the old gremlin fear. And uh, let's have a look. I was meeting with a friend of mine, discussing the differences in growing up in my generation versus growing up as part of her millennial generation. I told her that the summer time I was 15 years old, I washed dishes on a cruise ship, Alaska's inside, inside Passage. My friend said her mother would never have let her do that for fear that she'd be murdered, kidnapped or worse. So, you know, you're limiting a person's belief in themselves by, by giving them a fear of the world before they've even stepped into it. You know, oh, oh my God, you can't get on the bus. There's all sorts of weirdos on it. You can't go on the underground. There's all sorts of weirdos on it. The people might kidnap you. You might be found dead. You know, sadly, there are such crimes are committed in the world but when you look at that on the grand scale of, of, of you as an individual in the world the chances are pretty slim you know and instead of giving someone the courage and the enthusiasm and the incentive to go out and succeed in the world you're limiting them to not breaching boundaries that you might not have breached as a child yourself then you've got a skewed world view so is the world dangerous is everyone mean some people see the world as everyone in it as a big lump of can of cancer producing coal does that sound like how you were raised if so your family and probably your ancestors worldview is tilted at about 45 degree off axis the challenge with this kind of worldview is that all or everyone philosophy and that the people who have that viewpoint tend to hang out with like-minded people doesn't it sort of make you wonder if ancestrally they all shared a common experience that made their world such a big nasty place you know again it's it's very much tied in with that old gremlin fear and it's putting your view of the world onto somebody else and that might have happened to you generationally then there's the tyrants also known as the never question me now i'm sure growing up i'm 55 now and i i know that well you know well why do i have to do it because i told you oh but um i don't want to do it do as i say not as i do now for me growing up I heard that on the rare occasion I don't feel it was something that impacted me to the point that I need healing over it um, I find that I when my children were very small um, I was like look I've told you to do that do as I say I did find myself doing that but I feel that I spotted that quite early on and changed a lot of it and have been a fair but firm parent as I feel my own parents were and um, you know it was it was more a case of 
if I've told you not to put your hands on the coal, on the hot coals in the fire, I've told you not to do it because you will get burned. So when the child sees me putting coal on the fire, when my hands are going close to the fire, well, I want to do that. And, and no, do as I say, not as, as I do, because I'm there using my knowledge to pop that, keep my hands on the flame, where a child might go forward and just pop their hand on the flame. And um, those would be examples. It'd be on a safety issue, but not on a tyrannical issue, where it's, I've said this and I've said that, and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Um, I think there's two um, clear differences there, and we need to be aware of that when we're um, looking at ourselves. I think when we're looking at healing and issues that have arisen in our lives, we want to be sure that it is an issue and not something that was done from a safety point of view. That if you had a bullying parent who insisted you did X, Y and Z because they had said it and, and their word was law, then yes, there may be things you might need to sort of look at there. But if you know that things were said in a manner which was, I'm telling you this because if you do this, you could hurt yourself. That's completely different. So I have met many people who grew up in a home where the one parent or the other was an absolute tyrant. There you go. If dinner wasn't on the table at 6 p.m., all hell broke loose. If your skirt was half an inch too short, you were grounded. Back talking an adult um, would buy yourself a ticket to your room or worse. And so it's getting back to nature versus nurture. OK, did the tyrant in your family learn this behaviour during their own childhood? Probably, as I don't believe most of us are born to be bullies. In the tyrant, we're seeing the worst possible side of the emperor, which is our our, ma our fourth major um, arcana card. So that would be the negative side of our emperor. So the first thing I did, the first spread that I did um, in this second half of chapter five was the family pattern spread. So what did the family pattern spread actually look at? If you or your family inherited any fateful five or other unhealthy patterns, it's time to recognise them. Then the healing process can begin. From, and now this is um, what uh, Nancy has said. For me, a family pattern that plays hell in the present is perfectionism, hmm. which is both a limiting belief and a skewed worldview. It can be a killer because no matter what I do, it's not good enough. To begin working with a negative family pattern, use the entire deck and draw five cards. So we drew five cards. Now for me, mine was self-doubt. And it's not that my parents ever belittled me. It's not that they ever said I couldn't do anything. In fact, it was quite the opposite. I was very lucky. They encouraged me hugely. And um, so whether it's a genetic thing as opposed to a learnt thing, um, I feel that, that would be quite right in the sense that um, I was not pushed, I was encouraged. On In my third year of university, I was doing a five-year degree, in my third year I really was at the point of giving up, I was finding it very difficult, I um, was a mum, I was um, studying and I was working and I was beginning to feel the toll. And um, my father said, uh, and I was thinking of taking a year out. My mother and father knew me. And they knew that if I took that year out, I wouldn't go back and I'd never finish my degree. And I would never have taught. My father said, you're not giving up. I'm not going to let you give up. But there's a self-doubt in it saying, I can't do this. And I was telling myself I couldn't do it. Now, my father had never said, you can't do it. My mother had never said, you can't do it. So it's come from somewhere. There's that ne sort of little bit of negativity in me that must be a, gener a genetic trait as opposed to a learned behaviour. So I would say it would become more nature as opposed to nurture. And it sort of made itself visible in my own limiting self-beliefs. And then I felt that if things weren't perfect... I would stress out, it's not perfect enough. Um, how do I know it's going to be right for the tutor to mark? How do I know that a task I've completed is going to be good enough for my employer? How do I know that um, I am going to be a good enough mum to look after these wonderful little children I have? How do I know I'm going to be a great wife while I'm working, I'm being a mum and I'm trying to study and here I am 
a wife and can I do it all? I was putting limitations on my belief. But it's come from somewhere, as I have said earlier. So I did this spread. And this spread, you lay out five cards, okay? One to five. And the questions are, what is the theme of the pattern? That's card one. Card two is, which ancestor is the pattern's originator? Card three, why did this pattern begin? Card four, what is the first step to be taken to begin breaking this pattern? And five, what messages do the ancestors have for me about this pattern? Well, for the first one, what is the theme of this pattern? I got three of pentacles. And if you look at three of pentacles, it's all about planning and having everything in order. So it's, you know, it's sort of really worried about details, about being right, about ensuring that... Uh, and, uh, you know, all my bases are covered and that it, you know, worried if it won't be perfect, stressing out about the small details. So Three of Pentacles was ideal for that because it was all in the planning, all in the setting up, all in the the um, carrying out of a task. OK, then it's which ancestor is the pattern's originator? Now, for that, I drew the devil card which was very surprising because it's somebody who was controlling, liked to be in charge of who did what and when, liked to know what others were doing, when, with who and where, someone who thought they were correct and everybody else was wrong. And I'm trying to go back in my mind to the ancestors that I know and nobody actually fits that bill. So this is something that goes back quite further back generationally and um, it's the fact that that trait is there and it's buried so deep and that even to this day even when I go back and and uh, study each character that I knew when they were alive on my ancestors list there's nobody that would actually fit that description so there's somebody further back um, that that would fit so and, and when you look at each person on the ancestor chart you can see where the, the concerns I had were actually you could pick out well yeah that person might not have had the confidence to do x y and z and this person showed a, a lack of confidence when it came to doing x y and z you know so it it is there it has an origin but it's who so it's somebody with those traits. The third card, why did this pattern begin? It's the Ten of Cups. So this pattern began when two people fell in love and had a family of their own, you know, but this is where the changes come in. Having a family of their own, instead of being nurturing, were more controlling um, and acted um, in this sort of tyrannical manner um, and it affected the beginning of a new young family dramatically, and that's carried on down. Not the not the behaviours as such, but the effects of those behaviours that have had that it's had on other people. Then card four was, um, what is the first step to begin to break from this pattern? So the first step to break from this pattern is the Queen of Wands. Use your own ability to know what is right, what is wrong when it comes to having faith and belief in yourself and others, know that you can do what you can do to the best of your ability and be nurturing of this in others. Remember, nurturing in a maternal way, not a controlling or an oppressive way or any other negative manner. This self-doubt and need for abject perfection stops. The stress is just too much for anyone. So it's being there in a constructive, positive way, not just for other people, but for you as well, for, 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 for ourselves, telling ourselves we can, not we can't, reversing that view that we might have, or oh my gosh, I'm worried about this, instead of, well, why are you worried about it? Let's strip back the layers of the onion and get to the point that's making you worried. And from there on, we'll build up from that, you know? 
And then card five in this was, how can I safely, sorry, how can I safely face this? Oh, oh, how can I safely face this fear? No, that's not, that's a different, that was a different one, sorry. What messages do the ancestors have for me about this pattern? What messages do the ancestors have for me about this pattern? The hermit. Isn't that just amazing? I look inside of me, know that I am able to do anything that I set my mind to. I may do it differently to others. It may not be perfect in the eyes of others, but it's my way and I am happy with it. Trust my inner voice, gain any extra knowledge I need to complete any tasks. That means taking time out and reading and learning and looking at another way around to fix something instead of sitting there worrying and let me, getting stressed out. Then undertake that task. Understand that I am perfect just the way I am. So that to me, that spread to me was very valuable and it just made me feel, well, wow, this is some phenomenal advice. Now, this, the next part of this chapter, if healing can't happen. Now, I wrote a little note here because there was um, two, two parts to this. Um, so, if healing can't happen, there's a piece that you read about if healing can't happen. And what would, what would um, that be? So, in truth, family systems are a lot like weather patterns. One day a tornado, the next a gentle rain, etc. So, um, you know, a mother you adored may have passed over while you still desperately needed her. And um, you might have had a tyrant, a father who was a tyrant. And people who never knew balmy weather or, uh, you know, or a tornado would be waiting behind the door when they got home from a school. So, you know, the, it, there would always be a storm there that puts a fear of God into you, really. So how, it, it can't happen. If you can't heal from that, you learn how to cope with that and how to avert fears that arise from that. OK, deal with fears that arise from that. Now. There's an if healing can't happen spread. And following that, there was a. Um, where did I say I was going to do that one? Just bear with me. Yeah, there was the, the if healing can't happen and inner child healing spread. And here I've written a note to myself that I'm lucky to say that I did not feel the need to make use of this spread because I count myself very lucky indeed. I had an awful lot of support um, as a child. I have, um, you know, I don't feel that I have inner child healing issues. If I come across that in the future and I do feel that's an issue, this is something I will go back to. But I do feel that if I can't relate to anything that needs healing, in these senses, then I'm just going to hop on to the next one. And are we going on to the section, which is when group patterns are generational? So this is a spread that I have here. So has this ever happened to you? Your dad makes some kind of outrageous demands and when you question him, he responds, that's the way it is. So this is sort of a generational thing, well, because I said so, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And as I've given a uh, given example, I have done that in the past, you know, you know, that you do not comply, depend on the, uh, depending on the consequences. Uh, so dad's always using dad as an example. It could be mum, auntie, uncle, probably getting mad. And you're probably feeling that you have, that you're never heard. Now, if you've gone through this and who hasn't, you're experiencing the blowback of a generational pattern. Grandpa did it this way. Thus, it has to be this way. You know, I know you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, all these sort of things. Generational patterns are fairly easy to recognise because they begin with a statement, my dad did it this way when I was a kid, that sort of thing. And um, it can be irritating for people in this generation. I think when I was younger, you know, we sort of, oh, well, mum and dad said it, that's the way it was. And um, it's not, unless you've come from, if, unless you have a background where there was, 
sort of bullying and this well because I said so was sort of law without an ex explanation then yeah I think that's not great but there's the healing from family group or and or generation generational pattern spread so I chose to do this one because of the small examples I've given you but also there's a family there's like not a family issue there's there's an issue going back in generations that I sort of feel has had a knock-on effect in this generation and um, it's not one I'm going to discuss this is the uh, so, but the spread I can still um, do with you because it's a uh, it's sort of not dealing with the partic particular issue it's dealing with me as I am today so healing from a family group or generational pattern spread it's a five card spread straight line one two three four five how has this group or generational attitude impacted my life here we go Seven of Pentacles. Mm. Not quite seeing um, the rewards for work. Not quite um, there when it comes to um, seeing what you've planted grow. And I can identify with that because there are things that need to be done for me to be able to say, I'm cool with this. I'm I'm me and I am cool with what's gone on and it's made me a better person, say. I still need a couple of things answered and I'm working on that um, before I can say, well, I'm happy out, I'm delighted, you know. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm putting a lot of hard work into a situation, into a, a thing, and um, I've, I've got a couple of things coming up that's going to give me the answers I need. So it's nearly there in the sense of seeing um, a, a fruits of your labour sort of um, growing, you know. That that step before the eight of, eight of pentacles where your hard work is paying off, you know. This is still a little bit more for me to do. So what is the emotional weight of this occurrence? Now, I changed the word here because it was what is the emotional weight of this intolerance? There was no intolerance. So what is the emotional weight of this occurrence? So let's have a look. The emotional weight of this occurrence. Queen of Wands. Now, how would that be an emotional weight? An emotional weight of this occurrence is that maternally, and I'm using, I always like to see the queens as a mother figure, that maternally, I have always wanted to make sure I can do the best for my children, that I can do the best for people that request my help, whether it's um, friends, family or acquaintances, that I try to encourage the skills and talents that each have in others as well as myself, that I want to be there for everybody okay when that hasn't necessarily always been the case down the generations how has this belief affected how i see myself how has this i wouldn't say belief of here i'd say how has this discovery affected how i see myself nine of pentacles well you see the nine of pentacles fits in a way because this information came to light fairly recently and it's come to light at a time in my life where I am in the Nine of Pentacles. I'm retired. I'm getting to live my life in a way that um, I, can, I can research this. I can work on it. I can, I can build on it and I can also um, tie up loose ends. And it's uh, it's how it, how I see myself. I see myself stronger. I see myself in a position of being able to enjoy life, not endure it. And I have been very lucky in my life with the family and the support I have. And um, that 
is still something I have to this day. Um, albeit my, my father's past, I still feel his strength. I still feel his support in what I do. And I know that he supports me in my work now. How has this... Um, so how can I begin to heal from this experience? Yeah, how can I heal from this experience? Knight of Cups. It's going to take some travel, but it's emotional. It's it's getting to grips with emotions, going off and making the links to the people that might be able to help, might not be able to help. But being there, being the messenger, but being the defender of my own emotions too and um, protecting and looking after the emotions and well-being of others in my family that might feel um, what I'm feeling but are not verbalizing it and then how can I how can the ancestors help in this healing two of pentacles and I love this two of pentacles look at that Two of Pentacles, they can bring balance. They can bring understanding. Look, we have a maze in that far corner. They are helping to solve the maze of a situation that goes back generations. And they are watching over me. Look here, we have ancestors watching over me, balancing this. And this is something that will go on eternally. It's something that has gone on, will go on. But it's something that we can put to bed eventually and that's what they're helping me do so that is a great um example of the healing from the family group or generational patterns spread and um this the next section is breaking a pattern of addiction and again we're very lucky we don't have that and that this is a seven card spread that deals with addiction and you'll find that on page 85 of the ancestral tarot now we're going on to the last section of this chapter and this is the ancient ones so the ancient ones is a three card spread so the last group of ancestors of blood are cons uh, um, to consider are the ancient ones these are the ones who have contributed a tiny percentage of their dna to you i'm not talking about ancestors from four or five hundred years ago but the ones from thousands of years ago. In fact, your connection with them is m more anthropological than gene genealogical. But they are still a member of a, um, the very long line of people who created you. They live pre-recorded history and the level of the, their connection to the living would be so slim as to be almost non-existent. You will never know their names. You may never know where they lived, save the fact that all of us or genetically, uh, genetically came out of Africa. When I physically see the ancient ones, I only see wisps of spirit, not even ghost-like, but more like a whisper. When I first began working with the ancient ones, I thought their messages would be about survival, because that's pretty much what their lives were like. Find bear, chase bear, eat bear, or become bear's dinner. Is there a value in making this connection, even if it's only a one-time shot? For me, the answer is definitely yes. That's because I want to know what message they may have for me, one that has drifted down through time and I want to know how I can honour them. I thought a lot about what I wanted to know from the Ancient Ones and wouldn't you know it, they were as good as pulling the rug from under my preconceived notions as the fairies. Instead of sending messages about survival, pentacles, nearly all the questions asked were answered with a suit of cups. Try this Ancient Ones spread and see what comes up for you. So, we're going to take this deck, we're going to shuffle, shuffle and shuffle, and then we're going to see what the Ancient Ones have to say right here, right now. So, let's have a look. Uh, quite exciting isn't it
Okay, so what have you got to tell me, Ancient Ones? We want three cards from this and taking the three top cards. One, two, three. Now, the first one is how can I best communicate with the Ancient Ones? Seven of Cups. Well, make a choice, make a decision. How are you going to communicate? Are you going to use tarot? Are you going to use your pendulum? Are you going to use your rods? But make sure when you're choosing to, commun to communicate, you're communicating in a safe manner, that you're not sort of deciding to mess with things that you have no knowledge of. Now, I wouldn't dream of using a Ouija board. and um, That's just something that doesn't gel with me, although I know a lot of people in the tarot community do use them. It's just something that I have an aversion to. And therefore, I've got to make choices that are right for me. I've got to choose the method of communication that I want to use in discovering... Um, these uh, ancient ones. What message do the collective ancient ones have for me? The magician. Why are you questioning even? Because you know that you have everything that you need in order to progress through your life, not just with this ancient, um, this ancestral tarot journey, not just with tarot, not just with um, your your day-to-day -day running but with life itself that everything that you come across you have a toolkit of knowledge you have um everything here listen to your intuition use the skills that you have in order to progress in life in order that you can achieve and succeed and be happy in your time here on this planet earth and then we have the last question is how can I honour those of my blood who lived millennia before me? And with that we have the fool. Go out, explore. Don't just sit around and let your time go by stuck in a rut. You know, if you find yourself in a situation, oh, you know, life's boring, this, is, this isn't going on. You're not doing um, yourself justice or your ancestors simply because what's happening is we are stayed. You know, if we look at, if I look at how my ancient ones had to survive and had to discover new things all the time in comparison to what we do now, okay, we have technology that's come on in leaps and bounds, but even going from one village to another, or if we go pre-village, going from one part of a, a, a cave to another would be an adventure. But now, take the opportunity, discover new things, do things that make me happy. Don't be afraid to take that step. Don't be afraid to try things new. Go and do it. Live life. That's what you're here for. Life is to be enjoyed and not endured. So, that is what I'm taking from those cards. So, <laughs> uh, this is lovely. Then, then um, yeah, Nancy Hendrickson goes on to explain um, when she did the spread how um, the cards told her the best way was to communicate was with an open heart. So, I've... I think yes seven of cups you know look at the choices look at the opportunities look at the way that i can try runes cards whatever be open use my emotions okay so there we go that's that spread we then have a final spread in chapter five and that's saying thank you and goodbye so as we enter this chapter We've either found first steps to healing or discovered how much gratitude we have for our ancestors. It's definitely been the latter for me. It's discovering how much gratitude I have. I know that ancestors of blood can be the most challenging to engage with, regardless of the reasons that we came to this book. And um, I hope that this spread gives you at least part of what you were hoping for. So, let's have a look. We'll shuffle the cards once again. What's that noise? What's that noise? be a bird on the roof or something. Strange noise. Let's have a look here. The bird is wearing cognate boots. Yeah, I do feel that this chapter has definitely, definitely made me feel more gratitude for um for my ancestors both my recently deceased and and ancient ancestors okay how many to five for this one
it again because I left the card out. Oh. I want to lift a card out and pick them all up. So. So what which ancestor is with me on this journey? Which ancestor is with me on this journey? The Nine of Pentacles. So it's somebody who is quite happy to be on this journey. Somebody who is in a place with me in this Nine of Pentacles garden. I have a feeling I know who that is because I feel him every day. I talk to him and I do feel it's my father. Okay? Because he's at peace he's at rest and he's now having the retirement he missed what message do you have for me six of wands you're coming out of this a winner you know you're actually doing what you're doing and keep doing it right because when you do you'll feel that you have found out everything you need to find out and you will be more at peace what lessons can i learn from your life Five of Pentacles. Oh, look at the negative side, which is glass half full or glass half empty. A negative attitude can bring on stress. Stress brings on ill health. If you're going to look at the glass half empty scenario, my dad was a wonderful man, but sometimes he had the the um, the a way of looking at things would be a little bit on the negative side. That um, a little bit of nerves about taking chances which like i say comes from that as i said earlier on things had to be perfect and if they weren't perfect then it's it, you know he had the same sort of hang-ups that i have but he would have been a little bit more on the negative side and looking at the negative side of life had took its toll on stress levels and that in turn took a toll on his health okay and um not to do that don't do that Elaine you've done enough of that you've battled your battles when it comes to ill health and you're on the good side which is something my father didn't get to experience so he's telling me now don't let stress wear you down don't let problems that can be easily overcome by putting into practice your skills and talents and knowing that you're going to get there um, don't let that hinder you um, what strengths have I inherited from you Wow. King of Swords. Yes. Direct speaking. Being being caring of others. Being um there in in for others and for myself to guide along the way, but not being afraid to say how we feel and not being afraid to put our our two penneth worth um in a manner sometimes uh, a little bit on the strict side sometimes when i say strict direct direct side not strict sometimes a little bit on the direct side and sometimes i might need to think well elaine should you have said that <laughs> but then yeah yeah if um, you know my directness my honesty my um desire to be a positive role model and my um My strength, my strength. Yeah, definitely get that. What can I do in my daily life to honour you? The chariot. Look at that. I will honour my ancestor by being in control, by being happy enough to go down my own path, my own way. Not riding roughshod over others, but making sure that I'm in the driving seat and there's nobody manipulating the wheels, okay, the way they turn. There's nobody manipulating my direction. There's nobody manipulating what way I go. I'm doing it because I want to do it and I'm doing it my way with so much help and support. <laughs> so um, that's, that's how I feel. Now we're at the end of chapter five. Now there's some journal prompts that I will fill in as I go. And um, go on guys. Get your copy and join me. Join me on this rather amazing journey. Take care.
and I'll see you soon for chapter six. I wonder if we'll be doing that in one or two parts. <laughs>